Hey, this is Pete, North Las Vegas. Well, I went and did it again. I went and bought another RT6. Got this one from uh, Battlehawk Armory for 278. And the first one I bought was also from Battlehawk Armory, 268. So he went out of stock for a couple of months and when he came back into stock, they were $10 more, but still it's the best price I could find online. I couldn't find these things any cheaper. Anyway, he's a, an online retailer who also has a brick and mortar store in Grimes, Iowa. These, I believe, get drop shipped out of a warehouse and he's usually pretty quick on shipping. This one took a little over two weeks to get, but it sat in Arizona at a FedEx for like four or five days. So that wasn't on him, that was FedEx. And this one showed up after about, I would say five days, maybe six, I don't remember exactly. But uh, he's, he gets them out the door pretty quick also. Okay, so I don't have any affiliation with uh, Battlehawk Armory, I just, just bought his stuff at uh, his full retail price. So I just wanted to be upfront with that. Okay, so before we actually start talking about the Burris, um, I just wanted to show you what I'm comparing against. The Steiner P4XI, in my opinion, for the money, one of the best uh, LPVOs for power. And then, um, we're also uh, gonna compare it against the Nikon Black Forest 1000. Um, Nikon doesn't make these anymore. They got out of the rifle scope business, so these things have become unicorns. So they're no longer available, at least not brand new. You might still be able to find one out there somewhere, but I kind of doubt it. And then the last one that I'm comparing against is a six hour Tango 4. Okay, so the scope is made in the Philippines. And um, I actually called Burris to find out exactly what that meant. Was it just assembled in the Philippines or was it actually made there? And the guy I talked to said that the scope was actually made there. Um, everything is machined there. The glass is ground and polished there. And then I asked him, okay, well, where is the glass source from? And he said, as of right now, the glass is coming from Japan. So these are all pluses in my mind. It's not made in China. Okay, so the glass is good. I, I wouldn't say, you know, outstanding or excellent, but it, it's pretty good. Um, it's got some fisheye uh, as you move your head back there. Um, but it's probably no worse than the Nikons or the Sig Sauer. The Steiner is the best. The Steiner has very, very little fisheye, but you're talking a kind of an upper mid-range tier LPVO on the Steiner. Um, the eye focus for the reticle is very smooth. It's, I wouldn't say it's a coarse adjustment, but it's not super fine either. It's somewhere in between, but it gives you a very good adjustment on the reticle. I mean, you can tell when you, when you have a nice sharp reticle as you're adjusting it. The uh, zoom throw is about 180, and it's smooth. There's no grinding. There's no nothing unusual. Feels pretty good. A little on the stiff side. Um, as far as the turrets go, they're I would say a little mushy. Um, if you move this kind of quickly, you'll uh, you may blow past a detent or two. But if you move it slow, um, you can feel them. And if you're not half deaf like me, you might even be able to hear them. But they're a little bit on the mushy side. Um, the other thing here is the battery cap. Um, this, this small narrow section there, that's, that's for the battery cap. And it's kind of hard to get your a good purchase on it. Um, I think that could be a little bit better. The um, illumination ring is, is pretty good. It's about the right size. Get your fingers on there pretty nice. Um, speaking of illumination, I would say that this thing is close to, to daytime bright, daylight bright. Uh, not, not quite there, but very, very close, in my opinion. Um, it's nowhere near as bright as the Steiner. 
This thing is nuclear bright. You can point this at the sun and you can still see the red dot. This is not as good as that, but it's pretty good. It's, it's not bad. Okay, so we've talked about the, uh, the eye focus. We talked about the zoom. We talked about the battery cap being a little, uh, little on the small side to get your fingers on it. Illumination, kind of mushy turrets. Um, already mentioned that the glass is good. So I guess we can talk a little bit about what the scope's going in. And we're gonna mount it in this American Defense uh, Recom. And it's gonna go on this uh, Wyndham Weaponry Dissipator. And I'm gonna keep the red dot in the bag with, with this rifle and probably keep the burrs mounted on the rifle. And then that way I have a red dot and a scope to go with, with this particular rifle. <clears throat> okay, so I can't really speak to the, uh, how, this, how reliable this scope is going to be long-term because I just, I haven't had them that long. Um, I've had this one about four or five months. I'm kind of losing track of time. Maybe I haven't even had it that long. Um, so I can't give you any kind of long-term uh, review as far as, as how it's built. But I will say that, you know, I have not thrown it in a swimming pool yet. I haven't stuck it in the freezer and I haven't run it over with my truck yet. Um, what I did do was when I had this out at the range doing some practice and getting this scope zeroed in for this particular rifle, um, it fell on the ground. It fell off my, uh, my shooting bench. I ended up not paying attention and I put the bipod right on the edge of the bench. And when I went to check the target, it came back, this thing was laying on the ground. Um, as far as I could tell, it was the scope that took the entire hit. Um, there was really nothing else wrong with the rifle. There was no signs of anything else on the rifle really hitting the ground hard. So in my opinion, the scope took the entire hit. And the only thing that happened was, <clears throat> excuse me, there was a little bit of mushrooming on the ring here where the eye focus was. And there was a little bit of a scarring here on the, the cap. I don't know how well you can see that. So I took a jeweler's file and um, kind of straightened out the ding. You might be able to see a little bit of it right there. And that edge there was a little bit mushroomed over. So I got that all straightened out and then took some uh, birchwood, aluminum black, and uh, touched it up. So anyway, it passes the, uh, passes the 10 foot test. So after it took about a three foot hit, it landed in a hard pack here in the uh, Las Vegas desert. And there's a bunch of loose, sharp rock and uh, where the scope landed was, was a hostile environment. Anyway, it, it didn't lose zero. It didn't lose any of its adjustments. Uh, nothing happened to the scope. It was just cosmetic damage. So it passed my three foot uh, ruggedized test. Okay, so this isn't, I don't really consider this necessarily a negative, but something you might be want to be aware of. Um, first of all, this can be mounted in any one of these slots. This, this can be placed anywhere you want it. Um, I find that where it's located here puts it at the, uh, the perfect 180 spots. So I'll give you a look at how that looks on the back of the, the rifle. And then when you flip it, your 180, you end up in the same place pretty much, but on the other side. So for me, that slot right there is, is what works for me. Okay, so what's the negative or the annoying thing? There's a set screw in there and it's very small. And I think it's 440 or whatever the metric equivalent of 440 is. Um, it's, it's pretty small. And so when you get, get your throw lever selected where you want it, there's a set screw in here that has a like a nylon tip on it. And I think what happens is that that nylon tip over time takes like a crush set and it doesn't quite have the same tension as when you first adjusted it. So ah, this phone seems like it's acting up, not focusing quite right. Anyway, so anyway, I've had to retighten this. Um, probably a couple of times. When I go to throw it, you'll, you'll feel a little click, a little bit of looseness on the throw lever. Uh, I don't think it's in any danger of popping off because I had to tap this on with a soft mallet. It's a very tight fit, 
But when that set screw loses tension, there's, like I said, a slight amount of, of click. You can feel it. It's not really moving. You can just feel that it's not perfectly tensioned. So after about the second or third time I've adjusted this, it quit doing it. So I think that the nylon tip set screw has finally compressed enough to where it's not going to compress anymore and it's not going to lose its tension. So I, I would think besides the uh, making this battery cap a little easier, a little bigger to get your fingers around, and maybe changing this a little bit, either putting a bigger set screw in here or maybe make this throw lever a little bit longer and put two set screws in here instead of just one. And I think that might be an improvement for, for the burrs. And other than this and that, that's really the only thing I can say that, you know, I think could be a little bit better. And like I said earlier in the, in the video, you know, this is not the best LPVO on the market, but I think for the money, for the price point, I think it's it's hard to beat. It really is. And it's not made in China. All right, well, I'm going to get this one mounted on the uh, on the recon, and I'm not going to show that. Um, there's a crap load of videos on YouTube. But uh, just kind of wanted to share some of my experience with, with the burrs so far. So if I was going to rank these in order, um, when I bought my first Steiner, it was 468. When I bought my second Steiner, it was 520. Uh, I've seen them online now for close to $800. And the Steiner is a very good optic, but I would not pay anywhere near $800 for that. In today's market, I think maybe the way things are going, maybe 600 bucks would be the most that I would pay for the Steiner in today's market. Um, <clears throat> the Nikon's a very good scope. Um, got about maybe the same amount of fisheye as the Burris, maybe slightly less. Illumination's about the same. I would say between the Burris and the Nikon, um, they're running neck and neck. Um, as far as uh, optics and clarity and ergonomics, um, so the Burris and the Nikon, pretty, pretty close. Um, a scope that I would not buy again would be this Six Hour Tango 4. Now, all of the scopes I just pointed out are second focal planes. This is the only first focal plane. And in my opinion, Six Hour made the reticle way too small. I would say starting at around two, definitely one and a half power and lower. The reticle is so small, it, it becomes almost unusable. And the illumination is so poor that turning the illumination on doesn't help. So when you're below two, especially one and a half on down, the reticle on this scope is pretty much useless. And this scope will be sitting in the box from now till whenever. Um, this will not be on any rifle. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I want to do with it yet. I may just keep it as a backup just in case. Uh, like I said, about two power and above, it, it's not too bad. But um, they just they just didn't make the reticle correctly on this particular model. Now, this is the first generation you can tell by the, the taller turrets. The newer Tango 4 has a much lower profile turrets, but watching more recent videos and reviews on the newer Tango 4, uh, it, it has the same issue on the first focal plane. It, the reticle is almost unusable on lower power and the illumination sucks. So I'm just gonna tell you up front, uh, uh, as far as LPVOs go, I would look elsewhere. <clears throat> Okay, it's on there. Um, screws are torqued. Um, American Defense recommends that um, that you go 20 to 25 inch pounds max. Some people like 15, some people like 18. I put these at 20. So if they give me a range of 20 to 25, then I'll pick something under their absolute maximum number. Anyway, I uh, got the got the scope centered, got it all leveled up really nice. Uh, like I said, I like to get my uh, the back of the scope kind of even with the charging handle. That works out best for me for my eye relief and where I end up putting the butt stocks. And anyway, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm pretty happy with the Burris for the money. It's not it's not a bad scope. Like I said, long term, I don't know how they're hold up. 
but just from what little use I have on the first one I bought and the uh, dropping it three feet, seems to be built halfway decent. Okay, well, here's a couple of my other rifles. Um, Arrow Precision Upper Receiver, Palmetto Lower, Criterion Barrels. One of them's 18, one of them's 16. These are all Palmetto State Armory. Surprisingly accurate. They both shot around one and a half, two MOA. I was kind of surprised at how well the, the Palmetto State Armories did. It's just their Freedom Series barrel. All right, Pete, North Las Vegas, over and out.